<laughs> another day, another dollar, right? It's the corn-fed boys. Now we're here to build the amazing maze, maze. You heard us right, guys. The amazing maze maze, also known as the corn maze. Jacques has gotten dressed up for this. Why don't you talk oh, yeah. him through the fit? I mean, what we got here is a one-piece overall. <laughs> I got some stretch, some airflow, and uh, I got something in my pocket. Little, Maybe I'll show you later. He's got a little, little dirty pocket right there. <laughs> yeah, Myself, I'm just getting you know something I can do, <laughs> some squats in, nothing serious here. What are we doing? Well, we have all sorts of different corn, beans, and then some starts over here of what? Squash, Squash, pumpkins, melons, cantaloupes. Exactly. All the goodies. Everything good. So here's what we wanna do. We wanna have a bench right about here. If you find this bench, many treats will be bequeathed upon you. <laughs> but it's gonna be hard to find because we're gonna plant out a corn maze going in a sort of a I don't know, just like a standard maze, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty like, standard. No, no, no fancy pathways, think, no fancy quarters. We're I think not there we yet. maybe imagined this was bigger <laughs> in our heads. We thought this was a couple acres. It's but anyway, 20 feet by 20 feet. We don't have to get into that. Nevertheless, why don't we walk them through the varieties? Yeah, let's do it. Here we have the three corn contenders for this crop. And this really is the staple of the maze because you need something to grow tall and thick to kind of obscure the path. It's the maze of the maze. It's the maze of the maze. <laughs> now we have Bloody Butcher. So this one is supposed to be quite a good eating flower corn. Yep. But at the same time, it has this nice red color, hence the name. Now we also complemented that with Oaxacan green, which is same sort of story, just the cob is, is green. Yeah, it makes green tortillas. That'll green really tortillas, cool. really cool. And then we have hickory cane. This is more of a standard white corn, except for the fact that it grows 15 feet tall. <laughs> so we haven't actually grown personally here. I've grown quite a bit of corn, but none of it has even gotten I would say more than about seven feet tall. Yeah, I'd say that's about right for me too. So if we could get to 15, we'll throw this on the backside. I think that'd be an incredible feat. <laughs> so in this hand, I have bush beans. So these are gonna go around the perimeter. They don't need as much light. So those are gonna be planted today. Yep. And then the rest here are pole beans and those will actually grow up on the corn. But first we have to wait for the corn to emerge. So yes. they won't be planted today. They'll probably be planted next week, but we could definitely go in with the bush. Yes. Tiger's eye looks really cool. And then this one, I don't have a picture, but it's Jacob's cattle trout beans. The easiest way to build the maze is to come in just slightly, yep. maybe about a foot interior, and plant a block in a sort of square stripe around. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, if, if you're walking in the maze right here, right? We want this edge for our melons and our cantaloupes and stuff like that. Yep. So if we plant about at least a foot right. block row, down this way okay. and just do an interior foot around this whole thing. It's gonna be a little bit of work, yeah. but I think it should work. So this first row is gonna be Bloody Butcher straight down the line. Let's do it. So I've got a specialized tool set here. These are two garden markers. They're gonna be the dibblers. Boop, boop. Don't break your back, <laughs> that Bulgarian back. It's okay, I got my suspenders. It's true. holding me up. I'm gonna get a little bit of a, a quad work out here. You're gonna get some quads. I'm feeling it. That backwards walk. Make sure you get my good side. <laughs> The peach. <laughs> yeah, I thought the fruit tree fiesta was a couple episodes ago. And I realized there was such a big peach in town. Let's just say I always keep it in my back pocket. Let's just say <laughs> the juiciest peach is always on the tree. <laughs> Phase one is done. The corn is in. We think we've done it in a pretty intelligent way. Only time and mother nature will tell though. Now we have the watermelon. I have some random stuff in here. And then Poppy I'm gonna, J. I'm gonna bush it up with these beans. I'm gonna go around the edge. Load her up. Load her up. I've actually got three full flats of selections here, Jacques. So I'm gonna grab these and be a little... A little loose. A little, little loose, freeform. a little carefree, a little, sweet a little jazz, you know? <laughs> First of all, we have Silver Yamato. And second of all, we have Genesic, Genosic. It's an interesting mix of melons here. It's a dilemma. Unique. It's a dilemma because what if we plant them too close? Mmm, I know you want your melons. I don't want weird melons. Trust me, we all like well-shaped melons, if you know what I'm saying. You with me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, you like what you like, Jacques. It's I mean, not for me to say. I, I know what I like, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Blacktail Mountain? That's a good one. All right. I've grown that before. All right, I'm ready to climb the mountain. Let's just say this, 0% seedless in this, uh, this patch here. Seedless? We don't do that. I don't know, a lot of people I don't think have, have even experienced a seeded watermelon nowadays. The crazy part, is that's how it always was. It's literally the only option. I mean, first of all, botanically speaking, that is how it always was, but I'm talking culturally. Like yeah. The 90s, 
You're having seedless? We were spinning seeds. What are you? Papa John future. with $20 million to your name? <laughs> Jubilee Blush. Oh, sign me up. I'll tell you this, the luxury, the gardener's luxury guys, I can just put this many in the ground. How crazy is that, dude? I mean, I have, there's six different types of watermelons here. Oh, more orange glow? Oh, that was a good one. So here's a real question. How much watermelon are we gonna eat? Not this much, I mean, but we could have a party. If you let me take some home, I'll eat it. In we go with the watermelon border here. I'm gonna be biasing towards this ditch area because I don't wanna mess with the corn too much. And what we had success with last year with our watermelon patch, if you guys remember, is just planting them multiple per mound and planting them on a mound. So what I'm gonna do is come in on this corner, we'll dig in a little bit, just like that. I'll actually sprinkle in some fertilizer. Where'd it go? <laughs> and we're back. We've got the plant zone. I get kind of crazy here. I just pop in what, what feels right and mix it in a little bit. And I'm gonna loosen these up just slightly, not too much. But you really wanna make sure, especially with these watermelon, you can't, especially when planting directly in ground, you can't just settle these perfectly in. You kind of need to build around them a little bit, make sure this doesn't dry out because we don't have irrigation set up here, remember? So I'm gonna kind of mound them just like this, put them together, and I'm gonna start building this mound around them like this. It's, like I said, it's not a crazy mound, it's just enough. But it allows me to kind of level this surface as well, which is nice. I'm gonna space these, I think honestly roughly where they are. You can make a good case for spacing them a little further apart, but we're gonna try to have these kind of spill over this way. And maybe we, we skip the channel of beans on this front row. Just do the out, out row. That form is solid, Jack. Like that little two-step? I don't even know what a two-step is. <laughs> Probably the truth. Look at this dancing man. Wow. Not, no hands. Look at this guy. I've never seen a more coordinated man in my life. The problem is, I don't think you were like feeling the vibe. You didn't, you didn't, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Can I get low? Can I get low? Hold on. <laughs> Let me just say this, my squat depth, unmatched. Watch this. How low can I get? Can you come up though? But can you not move your elbow, can you not move your, your knees apart? What's the secret? Okay. Don't bring your knees apart. Can you hit that? <laughs> All right, one leg. Can you pistol? See, you got me, because I can't do that. Is this a dancing zone? Okay, we have the Manifold Staff of Destiny. You can see how it works. Very powerful tool. All the gods and goddesses want something like this, but we have it here at Epic. So, in we go. Now, is this the most efficient way to, to meter out water to an area? Actually, it's not. You would prefer to have something like drip irrigation, but we would also be forced to run that drip irrigation. And this overhead watering system, I think is gonna be a lot stronger for this particular use case. The only challenge is turning it on and then getting out of here by the time it launches. So, Jacques, clear the area. Thanks for tuning in, my friends. Please subscribe and stay tuned because this is going to be an ongoing saga here and we might do something very special in October. And with that said, good luck in the garden and keep on growing. Ah! Make sure you get my good side. <laughs>